And yeah, I'd like to introduce to you our One Heart has been in business for 16 years. It is run and managed by CEO founder and executives with more than 90 years of combined experience in healthcare experience and executive positions. Myself, my background is in 39 years in healthcare and master franchising trained in St. Louis, Missouri. Uh, we still run and manage our corporate owned locations. Uh, that's why we conduct not only the SWOT analysis, but the PEST analysis. So we know what are the things that change uh, the market, the political, economic, social, and technological side of it. So this is one of the best practice to adapt to the changing market. And we provide continuous training on three important functions, the sales and marketing, operations, and finance. We have a five-day business academy training at the start. Uh, after that, we have continuous training, uh, including field coaching and field work visits to the franchisees. Right now, we have implemented the monthly webinar. So we have various topics every month on the sales and marketing operations and finance. So we we are we've been in the business for many years so that we know we've managed to compete with the larger brands. So if you're going to say there are larger brands ahead of us or major competition in each cities or locations, more like we've uh, competed with them and we know their operations, we know their pricing, we know their their, their trade secrets as well. <clears throat> and one of the best things that we've done is we offer the largest prime territories with a total population of 400,000 to 400. 50,000 total population for each franchise territory. We have in-depth franchise territory market research of the area before we award it. For example, one of your clients, uh, Armin, uh, did we did the real in-depth market research of his territory in California. There are several unique senior care programs uh, we can easily execute. I also helped create and design some of these programs. Uh, like the uh, brain fitness education uh, seminars that we do. We have neurobics brain exercises, uh, fall prevention. All of these are meant to be able to make sure that we offer these wellness programs to the senior community. And because of this, it has differentiated us and allowed us to solidify our relationship and partnership with assisted living facilities for the past 16 years. So this is this is great because I, I know I believe that our healthcare industry is defective. It focuses on illness. One heart focus on wellness, hence all of these wellness programs. So because of this and the continuing education, we have One Heart Caregiver University. I'm the co-founder of One Heart Caregiver University. So since 2011, we have trained more than 3,000 caregivers. And even with COVID, we did an, our online training, the Care Academy. So we, we felt like we're handling human lives. So we need to make sure that the caregivers are really fully equipped with all the safety and protection and the best practices that uh, all the seniors needed to be able to stay with us as a client. So all of our franchisees have already experienced strong support every month. So we are able to see that during COVID 2020 versus 2019, we grew by 22.7%. But when we gathered them all together during the COVID pandemic, uh, we somehow, the CEO somehow reduced the fear and we have a clear direction on how to navigate during the pandemic. So that would that resulted into this year's very high record performance. So we expect to to grow 78% to 82% this year versus last year. And they're a great high record for all franchisees. Uh, they're, they're reaching their high growth for this year. That's, that's why they're looking into operating their second and third franchise locations. One will probably is looking at his fourth franchise locations and he partnered with some, some franchisees as well. So that's that's a good thing. For us. 
very interesting. And 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 thanks for going all over that, Randy. And would you also mind um, identifying kind of the main sources of revenue uh, for a franchise, like which services that uh, you know people hire one hard for? Yeah, the one of the main uh, streamline of revenue that they can they can get is by doing the one on one private care duty, where we provide caregivers to seniors who are in their private homes or in the major assisted living facilities. So many of the seniors live in their uh, assisted living facilities. So that's where we have worked for the past 16 years. That's one big uh, revenue because imagine if you have Jack like uh, eight hours to 24 hours a day service and it's going to last for two to 10 years. Because many seniors live by themselves, they're they're unable to to to, to function on their with their activities of daily living. So providing eight to twenty four hours a day will be a big help for them, helping them in their longevity, well being, and improved lifestyle. Another revenue stream that we have really mastered over the years is the staffing solutions. So the staffing contracts that we have. Uh, uh, signed with the assisted living facilities allow us to have our franchisees reach a volume business in this major senior living facilities. So many of these assisted living facilities are in different states all across USA. So if they have that in East Coast, Texas, Arizona, they will be able to utilize that contracts that we have to be able to build the good business reference and start the right business for them. Then another revenue stream is if they recommend and refer seniors to assisted living facilities. So that way we get some referral commissions. The franchisee also gets to, to earn out of that. So those are real three solid revenue streams that they can take advantage. Things we've done. As I mentioned, we still run our corporate location. So we continue to build uh, this business and they can make use of that in their own franchise territories. For sure. For sure. Cause I know in, in this industry, the caregiver industry, uh, having the right references, uh, is really important. Having the right connections. And like you said, the fact that one heart works with some, uh, brands that are located, not just in one geographic area, but kind of in other places throughout the U.S. that, that yes. benefits uh, franchisees. So right. that's, that's, that's a very interesting point you brought up. Um, would you also mind discussing a little bit about what does a franchisee focus on in the day-to-day, -day, right? Let's okay. say someone decides to open up a one heart. What is it that they're focusing on? They're, they just need to understand and uh, follow the business model. It can be an owner-operated uh, franchise, and uh, you need to have your back office support, which is which can be the recruiter, staffer, payroll master, and billing invoice. And you need to have like a field sales and marketing person, uh, case managers also who would need to develop relationship in the senior business living communities. So with that. Uh, judging from our own experience, the franchisees would be able to to select which one really fits her or his qualification. If he's the field and sales and marketing guy, all he needs is another person to be able to stay in the office. But some of our franchisee operators are husband and wife. So that you don't need to maintain a high cost of operational cost for the next few months while you're building the business, then as you build the business, then you can hire more people as you go along. But it all depends on your, your role and the skills that go with the role. So we will prepare you to be able to show you that this is something that's fit for you, this kind of position or role. Then you can hire another person to be able to do the other role as well, which would uh, really allow you to expect predictable results.
If it's a field sales and marketing person, they need to follow the area marketing program, business development program. And if it's the recruiter staffer, we also have our recruitment, area recruitment program. So it's more like a one heart way when you follow it, there's a roadmap. When you follow it, uh, for sure, you'll be able to have predictable results. Okay, now that makes, that makes a lot of sense. You guys have developed the playbook after many years in the industry, doing your own corporate location, yes. and also growing out uh, your, you know, your franchising system. Um, I guess one question then is from what you've seen in the past, uh, what would you say are the biggest challenges that a new franchisee might have? And then what do the most successful franchisees do uh, in, in, in your system? Uh, with, with the advent of the COVID pandemic, uh, more and more seniors are all realize and the family members realize that they need really real more help in the house. The challenge now because of the, I guess, all the other businesses are staffing. Mm -hmm. So uh, there, there are a couple of factors that attributed to that. Uh, there's there's higher uh, pay right now with some businesses. There's unemployment uh, benefits that others would really want to take advantage because they're going to take care of their kids in the house. Um, and although we have experienced this when we started 16 years ago, it's still the same challenge between getting clients and getting a caregiver. So this is nothing new to us. So what our franchisee top performers have done is to follow our recruitment program, conduct more job fair, indeed, social media, advertisements, referral programs, work on your existing caregivers to refer their friends, family members, uh, and as a result, uh, conduct consistent training. You know, when you conduct your local training in your franchise territory, it spreads out like a, a good positive thing for the company because they know that you're not only providing jobs, but you're also concerned about their continuing education which means they learn a lot, not only on the skills and knowledge side of the business or the work, but also on the personal development side. You know, when they see themselves, believe more in themselves that this is a noble task, that they can do more and they can help out in one senior's longevity, all the more they understand that the purpose of their work is something that's noble and not ordinary compared to other job. So to answer that, that's the recruitment side. It's consistent. It's uh, even franchisees that are near each other, neighboring franchises conduct their own job fair and it allows them to share on the cost. So that mm -hmm. more like, uh, you know, become more affordable for some to be able to implement because either a, with the co-franchisees in your area or with the corporate-owned locations. But we continue to to hire the best of the best. So it's an ongoing process that until today, uh, we, we're, we're getting good results. Okay. No, that makes that makes a lot of sense. Thank you for, for going over that. Um, you know, kind of like the staffing uh, yeah. area. Uh, now, in terms of the franchisee qualifications... Uh, what backgrounds can a franchisee have? Do they need a background or credentials um, in the healthcare industry? Yes, they do. We wanted, from our experience, many of our franchisees are corporate professionals, meaning they've been there for many years. Uh, only a few of them would have healthcare background, but that's okay because we are a non-medical home care agency. You don't need a healthcare background. You'll be trained. You'll be able to have healthcare professionals coach you on the different uh, diseases as well. Uh, they can have like uh, a good sales and marketing background. Then, uh, hold on. Um, yeah, sales and marketing background and uh, effective management and leadership skills. 
willingness to follow a proven system, and the heart for the seniors. Mm -hmm. uh, we love those who are achievers and really driven entrepreneurs. Okay. Okay. So overall, having a, a business background, professional background is important. Entrepreneurial mindset and having a healthcare background is not necessary as that's why they have one heart corporate to kind of teach them what they need to. So last question I had is regarding, uh, let's just say an investor, a potential franchisee is interested in one heart. Uh, what are the steps in the process from here? Let's say, say they watch this video, they say, hey, I'm interested in becoming a franchisee or I, I, at least I want to learn more about one heart. Uh, what are the steps in the process? Uh, there are six franchise step process. Number one is us receiving his franchise application form. It's also in our website. So just like some of your clients, so they 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 filled up the application. We need to know their background, their uh, territory, preferred franchise territories, their financial preparedness, because it's an eighty-eight thousand to one hundred twenty-seven thousand uh, total investment, uh, which is which includes a franchise fee of forty-seven thousand five hundred. Then. Uh, we will uh, have a, a telephone interview or this video might be able to help them or uh, know more about the company. Then we can schedule the second franchise step process, which is the meet and greet with executive, our CEO founder, Belina, COO Kevin, and myself as the VP of franchise development. Then we get to know each other, uh, tell them about uh, the operations, and we ask them questions based on the information that they filled up during the uh, in, in their franchise application. Then we submit the, a, a, an authorization form to them so that we can have like credit and criminal background check. So the third franchise step process is the FDD. Uh, you know that we're under the Federal Trade Commission. So the FDD allows them to see a 23 items, review it. The, the senior care industry, the management team, the role of the franchisees, the training programs, and the item 19, which shows the financial revenue performance of the franchisees and the corporate-owned locations. So this will allow them to review it with their accountant, lawyers, uh, for 14 days minimum, then write down all the questions so that after this third franchise step process, we move to the discovery day the fourth franchise step process. So the discovery day is they get to meet all the franchise, all the one heart uh, department heads, marketing, operations, sales, accounting, finance, and business development. So they, they will have some questions for them, how understanding their role and how do they support the franchisees if I'm in Texas or if I'm in Arizona. So they get to ask them questions and we get to ask questions. So after the discovery day, can be the decision of both party to be able to know whether we're really a good fit because franchising is a business marriage. So we need to understand that we're gonna be in here for, for a long period of time. So follows the contract signing. Then the last step is the franchise business academy training of five days. Okay. Usually it takes 60 days to 90 days process, depends on the franchisees how fast they they provide us with the information okay yeah that makes that makes a lot of sense and uh definitely enables a potential franchisee to get to really learn about the franchise enables one heart to get to learn about the, the franchisee potential franchisee before either side needs to uh, yeah you know sign the agreement so you know that makes that makes a lot of sense um are there any other topics uh, you wanted to go over today? Because as of right now, uh, I think I, I covered kind of the main questions. The, the, most, the most common question I get from franchise consultants, brokers, and clients are, why is your brand unique? So we considered our, our brand unique because we have our, the one, the things I mentioned, we have our in-house One Heart Caregiver University, uh, which is, which provides a continuing education. Very important because we handle human lives. Then we also have our health education programs, which is the wellness programs. 
So all of this are being done to be able to develop relationship and partnership to the senior living communities in their area. So that's that's kind of unique that we're consistent and all the all other marketing programs that we do. So the good thing is we have our corporate owned locations until today. So we field test and run the marketing campaigns and programs so that when it's successful, we are now ready to implement it to the franchise territory. So it's more like it's already field tested and proven successful. So then we implement it to the franchise. Oh, very interesting. No, that's that's a really important point because I'm sure um, yeah, individuals, they come into the to the home care market, caregiver services, they see the competition and it's, it's definitely important to know kind of the differentiating factors. Um, all right. And, and are, are there any other main questions, common questions that you get that we, we haven't gone over as of yet? Now we we can also say that we're always available if it's an evening call, a weekend, whatever serves their available time. We can be able to conduct a virtual meeting or a telephone call. That's all right. So we're we're just here whenever they are available on their time because some of them might be employed. So if they wanted the evening thing or the weekend, we'll be more than happy to accommodate that. No, for sure. That's really good to know. And uh, yeah, I, I, I know we have, we've worked with clients who really appreciate that when there's flexibility on the side of the, the franchise work. So that's great. Um, yeah, with, with that, I, I don't have any further questions. So thank you very much, Randy.